we're getting there. We got we got two players. They're loaded into the game. We're gonna jump into the game, and now we know that everything is gonna be exactly where we expect it to be. But yeah. you know, you were kind of talking about this, but I, I, I was also a big Ryung fan myself, especially from way way back in the like the yeah, Slayer's day and everything. But you're absolutely right that I feel like, especially if you look at like the last two years. Ryung is one of those players who does well sometimes in individual matches, but when it comes to his overall tournament performance, especially at these kind of international events, he really is one of those players that is getting like a top 32, a top 16, maybe here or there, but it, he's been one of those players that I feel like has the potential to go far, but really seems to struggle at these big events. It does seem to be that way. I, I feel like Ryung is one of these Terrans that absolutely has the potential to almost always punch above mm -hmm. his weight class, but the consistency just isn't there. And it's kind of hard to say why, because this is the guy that, you know, I have I've lived with and I've trained with yeah. back in my pro gaming days. This is the guy that I've casted in the GSL for season after season or watched in the GSL as a fan since, you know, what feels like the beginning of StarCraft II. He is yeah. an OG. And it just always feels like there's something missing, but it is so hard to place. And the more that I'm thinking about it, it does feel like it might be a little bit about his range. He never really had kind of the, the builds up his sleeves like a guy like Gumiho, for instance, would, or Byun would, or even Maru would to the same kind of degree, although usually Maru isn't quite as zany as some of those <laughs> yeah. other fellas. And uh, that's one of the reasons why coming into this game, I'm actually quite excited to see Ryung open with a double gas opening and a really fast yeah. starport because, again, I think about Ryung, I think about him as the kind of guy that just loves to build a massive ball of bio. He is really good. He could split with the best of them. His stutter step micro is fantastic. His drop ship micro can be really good, can pull you apart in all these different ways. But this game going with what looks to be a Widowmine drop, and I would love to see more technical builds like him, mm -hmm. or like this from him in TVP. And I think it's a great way, especially in the context of a best of three, to open up with one of these things, where if you are going to do something that's not necessarily your strongest suit of what you were talking about, like going for that big bio style, then doing it in game number one, keeping your opponent on guard about it for the rest of the series is a great way to start things off. And we'll see how effective this Widowmine drop is going to end up being. Reaper's going to pop in over here, and I believe it should have vision there of the mm -hmm. Cloud Council, so you confirm Blink is going to be on the way. This is a standard-ish looking Protoss player. I although he doesn't quite get the gateway counter. You maybe will find a little bit more information from him. Yeah, but I think Ryung can just kind of assume, you see that Twilight Council, it's two gate or it's three gate. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty much one or the other when it comes to these Korean Protoss players. They, I, I think even Hero doesn't really lean that heavily into the four gate blink. Very rarely, and especially in online tournaments, you will see him bring it out. But for a guy like Creator, no, he's going to play a little bit slower, a little bit more stats-esque in terms of just building up slowly, getting those two gateways. This time, a little bit of a faster robotic facility for Creator as... Now the Widowmine drop coming wow. across the map. And look at this spotting here from Creator. Just really good game sense to have these adapts right in the middle. He spots this coming through. Let's see how much damage Ryung can get done. If any, those Stalkers are already getting some good damage levied on that medevac. It is going to burrow. Might be able to take down one of these adapts, but that's a e reasonable trade here. Yeah, I love creator. the eye on the prize there with the Stalkers saying, I want that Medivac, and I know that I'll eventually get the Widowmine. The Widowmine is eventually going to die somehow. But oh. the Medivac, that's what you're really looking for. And Minjin to only really end up losing one uh, worker there. Yeah, that was really cute micro there by Creator, by the way. I think maybe on pre-patch with the, with the AoE, he might have lost two. <laughs> yeah. It's possible, but man, I was almost certain Ryung with the retarget was going to get at least two probes with that shot. But a yeah, nice control there by Creator as he actually is adding in. A fourth gateway, believe it or not. I'm pretty sure he's adding in a fourth one right Do, now. Where is his observer? Does Okay, he's making the observer right now. And oh. of course, the cloak is about to finish up four of those Banshees. And there is a shield battery being built in the main base. That's actually going to be really big to try and prevent the Banshee from being able to just immediately kill any of those probes. This really has to work hard to kill anything through the shield battery. Yeah, and this is so creative from Crater. He's basically going four gate blink, but he delayed the fourth gateway until after the pressure from Ryung had passed. So this is going to catch Ryung almost completely off guard. Look at this stalker count just ballooning here wow. for Creator. Ryung oh. moving out to the middle, but Creator's already ready for him. Blinks forward, trades out not even one stalker to get a siege tank. And this is the kind of aggression that can spiral out of control so quickly from the Terran perspective. You need your siege tanks to anchor the defense back at home. Even losing one for free like that is huge. That was the dream, be able to find one of those siege tanks over there. The shield battery also, while it does get picked off, 
it kind of did its job to an extent in the sense that it bought enough time for him to eventually recall. Now he's going to go for a potential blink up to the main base. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There is not a whole lot to siege up over here. In fact, it's going to be a tech lab already getting picked off. Yeah, Tank Lab gets picked off already. Barracks is going to try and rebuild that right now as the Starport lifts. But look at these trades right now for Greater. He is fighting outside of Siege Tank range. Imagine Rung with his defense with one more Siege Tank right above the Barracks, covered by the Siege Tank right by the, the main base CC. It would be so much easier for him to hold on, but instead Creator coming in. Ooh. Now looking forward, can almost two-shot this bunker, and he is effectively trading shields with this Warp Prism for Siege Tank for Marines, for add-ons, for bunkers, and this is the kind of aggression that very quickly could come to a head, Robbie, where Creator, one more round of warp in, should he decide to completely send it, could be game ending, but instead, three more gateways in production, charges starting out, third base is underway. We're not gonna see that crazy aggression Creator yet, but he has already gotten so much done. And I want to commend him on the fact that there was all of that going on and Creator was still ready and immediately on point for dealing with the Cloak Banshees coming into the third base without having the detection there or anything, just noticing that blur, making sure he had the warp in of the Stalkers, had the Stalkers blinking forward, damaged one of the Banshees to half hit points. I mean, he is not letting the defenses either kind of slip as he's putting on all of that aggression. He's finally backed off for now, but like you said, the kind of flurry of all of the other power things coming out with charge, the additional gateways being added on, getting up in more pylons to try and flood out Zealots, all of that is getting into gear now. Uh, here on Golden Aura, it's a little bit easier to take your third base than some other maps, especially if you go for as Ryung that nine o'clock position, right? I guess 10 o'clock if you want to be really technical, <laughs> but Creator, I'm wondering if Ooh. the game plan here, oh my God, gets a medevac too. This is just money in the bank right now for Creator. He's getting so much value, he even gets the Banshee on the defense back at home. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Creator, with what's about to be 10 gateways or so coming online, just absolutely sends it into that third base because Ryung has lost so many add-ons. He's lost critical units. He's lost medevac, siege takes, Banshees. Yeah. He's lost Marines. He's lost bunkers. He has gotten whittled down oh, the so much, and now the siege takes with almost no support. Ryung caught out of position, and the backbone of his defense just obliterated to start off this fight. Even the, Ze the Zealots charging in, bringing the Widowmite shots on top of the bio, and Creator, the supplies might be very even, but is doing such a good job reaching this position. Yeah, the War Prism reinforcing with some more Stalkers is going to put an end to the potential of Ryung being able to hold that low. Location. The supplies may look somewhat even, but right now we can tell Creator is absolutely in the driver's seat. He's going for the bunker bus. He is going to be able to find the bunker. It doesn't look like he wants to continue committing over there, but even just denying the third base for this long is going to be so annoying. Creator can continue to reinforce. It looks like he's going to recall a few units. How much is he recalling there? It might be a bit just to take down. Nope, just okay. two stalkers and an obs. But even in this situation, I wouldn't be surprised if Crater recalled a little bit more just yeah. trying to go for a two-shot on the Banshee because from this stage, Ryung is going to have such a hard time taking a third base, and this almost feels like... Oh, I love this Blink Micro by Creator, but this almost feels like... You know those super late-game TVZs where the Zerg has amassed this huge bank and Terran is trying to take a fourth base to get those last geysers so they can hunker down and play yeah. the Maru style? And then Zerg just never lets them expand. They attack and attack and attack. Creators basically can play the same style, almost a Zergy style of Protoss in this situation because he has grown too big to fail in this game. All he has to do is prevent Ryung from securing a third base, and this game is done. And look at the Zealot streaming in. There is so much army here for Creator, almost pure oh. gateway man. The first Forge is only just now about to finish because he doesn't need upgrades. Look at this army. It's just way too big. He's taking out the SCVs. He's taking out the Marines. He's going after the Medivacs with the Stalkers. And these Widow Mines, these Widow Mine drags from the Zealots have been so on point, continuously damaging the Bio Forces. Again, even if Ryung holds here, even if he pushes Creator back, he doesn't actually secure a location for the third base. The third base, <laughs> I think, is there, but is it really mining right now? No, maybe a mule or two have been dropped, but basically no SDVs. No, it's even just getting lifted back into the main base. Oh my god, what a storm! And the follow-up is good as well. And Creator, I think, is about to take a game one win here against Ryung. GG! And what a commanding start to this series from the Korean Protoss. Impressive play is the only way I can really put it there from Creator. He really was just in the driver's seat for pretty much the entirety of that game.
The only other times was when it was basically even. I want to actually credit Creator also. He was doing small little things as well with his charge zealots, where he was doing the Widowmind drags. One of the engagements, he literally deliberately targets the zealots on the back end of the bio so that the widow mines drag into the center of the bio wars. it is just a small little thing that you can do that i can have such a massive impact just phenomenal job there from creator of that game that was a very impressive and very promising game number one from creator because we remember him talking to william on stage before the series began william's like well what do you think is going wrong in these series and creator said I have just been playing against too many Terrans. I'm showing all of my tricks. Yeah, the, the Widowmine Dragon, yeah. phenomenal. But I'm showing too many of my tricks. It's too predictable for my opponent. And then in this game, Gren goes for the Widowmine Aggression. Creator, he stops it very well. And most players, they would do that. They would go back to their original game plan. What does Creator do? He goes completely out of the box. He adds a fourth gateway way off the typical timing. It is not the most <laughs> ideal timing to add a gateway in then. He does it because it's unexpected. He does it because Ryung was scouting with his aggression, and then after the scout finished, he has no idea what's coming on. You're not going to drop a scan as Terra in that situation. You're expecting the third. You're expecting the Robo Bay. And Creator was just able to ride this momentum with this unexpected attack of Blink Stalkers to pick off the first siege tank, and it was like the first domino. From there, everything else just cascaded in destruction on Ryung's side of the map, and it culminated in a brilliant timing attack, and those are the kind of moves that Creator needs to make in this open bracket format when he gets predictable to just throw a wrench into the game plan of his opponent, because now you're young. You're down one map in this series. You want to try and fight and stay alive here in the lower bracket. What is Creator going to do next? Is he going to go crazy again? Is he going to forgate again? Is he going to do something completely different? How do you prepare? It's such a tough problem, and let's see if Creator can send it home now with a win in game number two as he is spawning as the Red Protoss in the bottom right. It is Creator. And up here at the top left-hand side of the map, certainly not out of it just yet, but he has to win the next two games in a row. Our blue Terran player from Team Vitality, he is Ryung. Put so well there, State. I mean, Creator just did a phenomenal job of throwing Ryung off his kilter. And I feel like Ryung has, in the past, sometimes been a player that when he gets thrown off, it's hard for him to bounce back in the series and everything. So I feel like this is a really, really tough spot for Ryung. He's really got to be able to rally because this is not the winner's stage stuff. This is the lower bracket of the open stage. This is elimination. He's fighting for his tournament life against one of the best Protoss players in the world who has shown that he is not afraid of reaching into his bag of trips after playing. I mean, this is, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, this is his fourth PBT series in a yeah. row, which yeah. is insane in an open bracket format. Just have that kind of, I don't even know if I want to call it bracket luck. luck just or have the luck. fate yep. go this way, or you have to keep going back and back and back into all of your different builds. And so I, I love Creator coming in with something new. My eyes in this game are going to be on Ryung. What is he going to try and do to stabilize here? Because as you said, Robbie, he is fighting for his life. This is do or die. It is elimination or you moving on to the knockout round. And he did not fly all the way from South Korea to go to the knockout round, man. He's going to try his best to fight back in this one. No, he wants, both of these players really want to make the deep run in this event. So. As we head on to Oceanborn, a map that is very familiar for both of these players and has been around for a while, we're going to get to see what these two players are going to be up to. I feel like we've been seeing a lot of those kind of very standard Blink Stalker openings and everything, but you were talking about before, number of gateways can matter, whether it's two or three gateways or the secret fourth big gateway. Like, what is Creator going to be up to this game? A Twilight Council going down again, Ooh. and I love this from Rung. Coming in with the Medivac Proxy all the way at the 3 o'clock position. We'll see if Creator can actually scout this. And it's going to be paired with Hellions. I think this is going to be one of the most classically annoying TVP builds of all time, the Hellion drop, yeah. should he be carrying those into the main base. And I wonder if Creator is actually going to spot this, because he's playing a little bit aggressively here with his first Adept. I'm surprised he's not moving up the ramp, especially with that shade. And he actually cancels. He wants that SCV. Ah. Hellions are going to be kind of revealed here, so that is actually helpful. You can try to start preparing a little bit with where you position your units and everything. Whoa! I thought for sure that was dead. That was some yeah. nice finesse micro behind the minerals. 
I actually, I actually stopped looking because I wrote it off as dead. <laughs> I was just like, I was just looking directly into your eyes, Theta, as I was like, I think that he. He's going to have a chance to prepare for these Hellions, but yeah, the Hellions are going to move across the map. Creator is going to have an extra Adept, which is extremely helpful to have against Hellions. Yeah, it's going to be very helpful. And actually, oh my goodness, is this probe going to spot the Stargate? Wow. Unbelievable from Creator. He spots it as soon as the Medivac comes out. That probe even almost chasing the Medivac for a moment. <laughs> like, no, you don't, buddy. As Creator already moving into position, the shield battery is set up. Adept focus firing the Hellion to the front. I think maybe not even one probe going down there is the Hellions all the way down to three. And now Creator setting his eyes on the Medivac for a moment there. This is the last chance really for Young to try and get economic damage done with these Hellions. He will get five probes in total, oh. but this is not worth it for the Terran. You're hoping to get a little bit more done than that because the Medivac goes down, the Hellion goes down. They are no survivors and in total five probes? That is not enough because on the backswing from this with a warp prism, with Blink, with two more gateways in production, this could very well be the same story as game number one because Ryung lost so much production time in the factory that it wasn't going to Siege Tanks, mm -hmm. it was going into Hellions. The Starport now, after building this Liberator, has to lift all the way back into the main base. And I don't really know, should Creator decide to fully send it with the aggression, if Ryung can really hold on without Siege Tanks, he's building Cyclones right now. I, I think it's going to be so, so scary for Rion. Because, like, as you said, is that going to be any medevacs? The, the one Liberator is going to have to try and buy some additional time for a while as the probe continues to scout out that starport location. But Liberator comes on in and is already seen. And I think Rion might even be going mech here, Robbie. He's building oh. a second factory back at home. This is oh. not what I expected. There's a third. I guess oh. we're going to be seeing battle mech, but, yo. Know, Cyclones, as you see right there, they are not very tanky. And this is the kind of situation with no siege tanks where should Creator get one favorable engagement? Should he sever the head of Urung by killing numerous Cyclones here? This is just going to spiral out of control. As you see on the bottom right of your screen, Liberator gets taken out with Blink Micro. These Cyclones are taking a ton of damage and just shields going down for Creator. He can even go for the Starport if he wants, but no, Robbie's Whoa. going for the jugular. Aggressively forward, slams out one after another of these Cyclones. Only a single Cyclone remains. The SCV's trying to buffer a warp in brazenly inside the natural. is not going to go punished. The Cyclones are getting picked up, and Creator has knocked Ryung out. 2-0 for our Protoss player. Wow, two games.